section 14.2 the regression equation the regression equation uh, let's uh, introduce some new terms here the first one is called scatter plot scatter plot is basically the actual xy plane like so so you're given uh, xy coordinates or points and all you have to do is just plot them on the graph like normal maybe something like this usually it uh, it covers the positive values like from zero on zero on uh, and it could it could um, represent x versus y or t versus y it could be anything but here for now we're going to go with x versus y that's called scatter plot just plotting the points on the graph like so what is our goal behind this section um, these points though that we plot them on the graph we would like to find a line a line that that we can draw here and make it as close to all these points as possible to make it as close to all these points as possible and that line is called best fit line so best fit line or we call it trend line best fit means it best fit this data so it depends how people look at it maybe someone might pick this point this point because you need two points and then connect them you know maybe this is a uh, the best fit line maybe someone else might take uh, this point and this point and then just connect them no matter how you do it it's good but then we're gonna figure out which one would be the best uh, and that would depend on the difference in the points so if you have if you take the distance from here to there from here to there from here to there and find what that distance is uh, and same thing can be done for the green one find the distance from here to here from here to here from here to here from here to here and see which one gives um, more difference the less the difference the better the less the better uh, the better the line would be this is just an idea what we're gonna be doing today and how and we're gonna learn how to find the equation of the trend line uh, for the meantime what we do, this is just a, a data, a given data, x, y, uh, x, y coordinates. And then all they did, they just graphed it, as you can see. Again, you can uh, pick any two points or get a line in the middle like this to best fit the data. That's our goal, to find the best. Why do we need this best fit line? Uh, the idea behind it is, um, let's say they talk about car, car 1, car 2, car 3, car 11 this helps to do some predictions or future predictions so it tells us like what's going to be the price for the 20th car or if you're talking about increasing the population you plot on this year the, the, the population of this city was this and this year the population was this and then you go on and on then the city will be able to predict the population 20 30 years from now so then they can know how to uh, design things out and how to plan the whole entire city um, that's what is gonna happen so let's say I'm working with this as um, as, as I said the population say X is the number of years from a certain year and Y is the population size we know the straight lines MX plus B or y equals sometimes you will write it this way so when we find the best fit line which would look like this then after let's say 20 years so an x equals 20 or 30 or something you can substitute it in and that will get you the predicted y value and this predicted y value is the predicted population future population size that's what the idea behind this section so here they just give uh, um, a small data with the plot which would be difficult to handle in this case it seems like if you draw a line here this this could possibly be an outlier this could be an outlier but uh, let's see what we are going to do here we are given we are given on this uh, under this figure two different straight lines as I said, you can have different uh, best fit lines. And then what we will try to find here is um, based on the equations and the green dots, we try to find the error. E is the error. So the error of this uh, one here is two because that's the vertical distance above the line. 
This is negative two. Negative two is just an indication it's below the line. And this is zero because it's exactly on the line. Same thing here, one, negative two, one. And then I will show an example what happens here or which line could be the, a better line, a better best fit. So to do so, let's introduce some uh, new variables. The first variable is called the y hat. The y hat, is gives, it gives me the x value predicted by a line for a value of x. So for any given value of x, you get the y hat. As I, as I said earlier, when x is 20, we get the predicted value. That predicted value is the y hat, is the y hat. And then um, y itself is the actual value. So if I want to find the error, I just take the actual value minus the predicted value. So the y value could be less or bigger than the, pre the predicted value. That's why sometimes you get positive, sometimes you get negatives. And why do we need this? Well, let's look at um, let's look at line one. This is the first straight line, and this is the second line. If I look at the first line, these are the x and the y values for that line. Those are given a given data. Same thing there. These are the same x and y values for the same data. It must be for the same data. So then, what happens is we find the y hat by taking the um, each corresponding each value here for x and substitute it in the y. So when x is 1, this x equals 1, uh, we substitute into this line, we got y equals negative 2 plus, negative 1 plus 2, which is, which is 1. That's where this 1 came from. So that's the y hat. When x is 2, y hat is negative 1 plus 4, which is 3. That's where the 3 came from. When x is 3, this 3 here, the y hat is negative 1 plus 6, which is 5. That's where the 5 came from. So that gives me the y hat. Now to find e, e is always y minus y hat. So y is 3 minus 1, 2. 1 minus 3, negative 2. 5 minus 5, 0. Then we need to find the square of the errors. 2 squared is 4, negative 2 squared 4, and 0 squared is 4. If you sum them up, the sum of the errors, the sum of the square of the errors. So for this one, the sum of the square of the errors is 8. For this one, the sum of the square of the errors is 6. Same concept, but it's just uh, different numbers because we have a different straight line. So this means what happens here, why do we have to find the sum of the squares of the error? The less or the smaller the sum of the square of the error, the best the line is it's going to fit. So the less, the less the sum of the square of the errors, the better the best fit. So in this case, we can say line B is better than line A. Line B is better than line A. The second line here. It's, it's a better uh, fit. Uh, let's also, um, on the right side, uh, the, what we use, or the criteria that we use to decide on the line that is best fit, is called the least square. Least square, because we are squaring the errors and we're trying to get the least error as possible. The less the error, the better. And the best fit line has to have the smallest possible sum of the squares of the errors. And that's what I just spoke about. The less the error, the less the sum of the squares of the error, the better the best fit. Uh, two quick things. Dependent variables sometimes in the language here of the best fit lines called the response vari variable. And the independent variable we call the predictor or the explanatory variable. Uh, those are just uh, new terms that we use them here. Now the question is how do we find the equation the best fit line? Uh, that's uh, uh, sorry, the regression line. So uh, that best fit line that we find is called the regression line. How do you find the equation of the regression line? That's what we want to find. Uh, to do so, uh, the regression line is going to be, and you'll see down there, is y hat equals b0 plus b1x, where b1 is the slope and uh, b0 is the, we call it the y-intercept, as we did in the previous section, previous section. So how do I find B1 and B0? Each one has its own formula. Recall X bar is the mean of all the X values. You add all the values out, divide by how many numbers you have. And the same thing, this is the mean. Y hat and Y bar is the mean. Uh, XI, when we use this term, XI means the X values given in the, in the data. X1, X2, X3. And the YI, those are the Y values. So if we uh, look at this one here, 
this is how we are going to find the B uh, down here. B1, B1 is defined as S sub X, Y over S sub X, X. And B0, B0, um, which is the Y intercept, is Y bar minus B1 X bar. So if you, if you make a mistake with B1, so this B1 is B sub 1. If you make a mistake with B1, you will make a mistake with B0. Unless if you use the other formula, which is this one, then you can still also see that B1 is involved in there. B1 is involved. Um, so you, you, you better be watch careful about this. Now, how do I find SXY? SXY, it's written in the table here, is the sum of the XIs minus X bar square. How do I find SXX? Uh, sorry, that's XX. SXY uh, is the sum of the product of the this difference and the y difference s y y is the sum of y i minus y bar square that's that's how we define them and then you can use this uh, th that's the defining form that's the computing form you can use either one of them uh, to, to compute what you need uh, let's let's look at an example Let's look at an example here. Let's say I have a table of values x, y, 1, 2, 3 for x, and y is 3, 1, 5. The first thing I always do is find the mean for the x's. 1 plus 2 plus 3 divided by 3, 6 divided by 3, 2. y bar is 3 plus 1 plus 5 divided by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Then I'm going to construct a table of values. Table organizes everything for us x y so x is 1 2 3 3 1 5 we need to find x minus x mean so take 1 minus 2 negative 1 2 minus 2 0 3 minus 2 1 then we find y minus y bar 3 minus 3 0 1 minus 3 negative 2 and then 2 then if you notice in the formula itself you need to square these values so i'm gonna take this is the xi and the yi so xi minus x bar square and i'm gonna do the same thing yi minus y bar square so negative one square it's one zero square zero one square one zero square zero negative two square four two square four then what we have is x i minus x bar, uh, y i minus y bar. So we multiply these two columns, negative one by zero, zero, zero times negative two, zero, one times two, two. Okay, now remember what we need is, we need to find s x y is defined as the sum of the x i's minus x bar times y i minus y bar. So if you take the sum of these what are you going to get 0 plus 0 plus 2 which is 2 and s um s x x what is that going to be so based on the formula s x x is the sum of the squares sum of the x i minus x bar square which is 1 plus 0 plus 1 which is 2 We found SXX, SXY. Then we can find from here B1, which is SXY over SXX. 2 divided by 2, 1. We found B1. Now we need to find B0. Uh, to do so, to find B0, we first need to find to sum up all the X's, which I got 6. Sum all the given Y's, the three of them, it gives me 9. So B0, you can find it as Y hat minus b1 uh, sorry y bar minus b1 x bar so y bar the mean for the y's was 3 and for x was 2 so 3 minus b1 is 1 and this is 2 so 3 minus 2 is 1 that's that's b0 then y hat the equation of the of the best fit line is or regression line b0 plus b1 x so then that gives us b1 is 1 and this one is 1x or you can simply write it as 1 plus x or another way to find b0 that's why it's 1 over n 
the sum of yi's minus b1 the sum of xi's that's why i find these sums so n is the sample size three of each this was nine this is one and this is six if we calculated it we will get the same answer as before nine minus six is three three times one third is one so that's how we find it this is the response value predictable value and this is another example here with a larger data value set where they found the trend line or the regression line and you can always use a calculator just not to forget uh, to find the re regression line either a calculator or a, a software and then you will see that um, it's not uh, difficult to do so uh, the other thing is what happens is sometimes when you have a data you plot the data on the graph say your data looks like this and then you have a best fit line this is the um, the x and the y so what this is saying as x increases so as you go to the right side as x increases what happens to the y the y goes down decreases for the other one another uh, option or another uh, thing can happen let's say that's the best fit line again x and y as x increases what happens to the y the y is increasing so this is just the relation between x and y and so again when we find the trend line or the regression line something to keep in mind that the slope of the regression line slope of the regression line tells us about what we call the rate of change rate of change so if b1 which is the slope less than zero that's a decreasing if b1 the slope bigger than zero that's increasing that's an increasing and um, another thing to know is you know when you want to find the predicted values you know for for the previous example if i want to find when x is four all i have to do is just substitute it here in the regression line that would give me five so from the table here from this table if i want to predict if i want to predict the value here uh, for four that would be five if I want to do for five, that would be six, and so on and so forth. That gives that gives us uh, the predictions or the predicted values. Um, what else we need to know here? So what can happen sometimes? You plot a data. Say this is the regression line. And then you have a data like this. You notice most of the data values or set values are very close to the regression line only this one this is called the outlier the outlier can affect the calculations in the data that's why a lot some researchers they can just delete it from the data and then work out with the rest of the um, the rest of the data excluding this value okay now again um, it's good to use and know how to use a calculator to find the equation of a regression lines and I'll include a video about that and this can be used on homework instead of uh, you can do calculation for easy values or easy data as I showed you but for large set of data it's better to use a calculator or any other software